Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, the boys and girls, and all Neverwinterian fans. So today we speak about Hunter Mod 28 Hunter Rotation, because it will change just for a little bit, for a single target and a wee target. So as you know, aim and strike, get some nice, nice love. Finally, this ad will start doing damage. Maybe it's not that a lot, but it's additional damage, which is very nice. At least on my build, on that's how I'm playing, it's doing almost same or exactly same as my aim at yard. So it's it's very not bad. However, it will be differences between what people using slash at mark or destructive shot. I'm using personally destructive shot so I can use much more encounters and much more uh, proxying how to say roots and gushing wound. But overall I will recommend proxying AMS strike for every start of combat and when you finish your rotation. So that on this way you will never need to count like this 10 damn seconds before your aim and strike is gone. Because you want to have always, at least on single target, of course, if you don't need to dodge or whatever, whatever, to do this additional damage. And I'm with Augment because I just don't want to show other, di like, different uh, damage type. So basically, uh, let's see, can I just crit on you? Can I just crit? It was no crit. And as you can see, aim is... Okay, that was a crit. 122. 51. 100. 153. So it's basically 50k critical. And of course, my stats is not that kind of good. So it doesn't matter too much how much damage is doing. Because we today speaking about how to implement this at will into our rotations. Uh... Can I just found my arms? Please, thank you very much. So maybe even now it will make sense to use like at will damage. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? So overall, as I say, I think it makes sense to use like artifact. Start with aim at strike. Put your rotation and finish with aim at strike again. Because aim at strike is not like gushing wound. It can stack, but you can refresh timing. What I mean by refreshing timing, if you can see, it's going down. 9 seconds, 8 seconds, 7. If I am apply again, it's just refreshing timing. That is refreshing timer. However, with gushing wounds, you can get double damage from gushing wounds if you're applying very fast with, like example, disruptive shot or slash at mark. But, let's look at first at uh, how to say uh, slow mo slow motion on this personal new rotation so as we say we starting with aim and strike first bang gushing wound bang so just just putting gushing wound on cooldown and I think that's long strider yeah long strider constricting arrow hydring strike steel breeze hydring strike and we finishing with uh, rapid strike, aim at strike. My bad. So again, aim at strike, gushing, long strider, constricting. Uh, what is your name? Hydring shot, steel breeze, hydring strike, finishing with aim at strike. So in this way, we will always have this damage ticking. And doing some damage over time. On fast rotation, it looks like this. And finishing with aim and strike. Which is very nice amount of damage just from damage over time. And keep in mind gushing round damage over time and aim and strike damage over time is going into visual same buff like example if i will crit
Well, it didn't work, but it will be on the same damage on both, like on screen, but ATT will show you a different. So in my rotation, when I'm using a lot of this deceptive shot, it will looks like this. And finishing with aim at strike and at wills like for free aim at shot. Again, starting with aim at strike, our rotation. I know I can do double encounters because it will be fine. So, if you use tactical precision at least one, and if you're using disruptive shot, you can s don't apply like that much of aim at strike. But just to not be confused or like, oh, did I apply? Did I not apply? Yeah, it, it just make a sense. Just apply, do rotation. Finish your rotation, apply again, disruptive shot, all encounters, aim a strike still ticking, and finishing again with aim a strike, and use at wills if you don't have cool, uh, encounters. When you're finishing your at wills, and then you can pop your encounters, again just aim a strike, into gushing, finishing. So in this way, you will. 100% will get like uptime for your aim at strike damage over time. So now let's show you ACT for two minutes with my rotation and my small daily. And of course, no big artifacts or less use big artifact. So two times this will be imagine big boss like Hollister when everything, everyone is using artifact. Be right back. Here we go, our ACT, so basically it was 2 minutes, 6 seconds, 103 million damage, 827 NDPS, and of course keep in mind it was this big big artifact call on big boss. So let's see what we have, so we have Tornad Roots, Gushing Wound, Long Strider Shot, Bigs Behind, Constricting Arrow, I use one time without uh, artifact, my bad. So most interesting is Aim Strike and aim at shot both of them did 6 million damage because yeah it's just additional damage which is still very nicely and very very fine so overall yes you kind of want to implement your aim at strike on single target because it start to looks looks good it looks like you're a little bit wasting time because you can pop maybe only aim at shot but overall, for some damage over time, it's, it's, it's still fine. Even if you look at char, some of them that was like on artifact call. So I did some nice damage over time from my aim at strike. That's without artifact call. And this one again with artifact call and damage over time. Which is kind of fine. Like 60k is like almost our 75 mag root damage whatever so yeah overall it, it looks cool of course i'm not i can say like it's not like very real ndps just because of big artifact call like the buffer which we will have is powerful so yeah it will make sense now use aim at strike and aim at shot in our single target rotation so now let's move off to our e so for our e powers we will use cordon of arrows Rain of Arrows, Constricting Arrows, Plant Grow, Rain of Swords, and of course, Steel Breezy. Which is very nice because all of them now can do some nice AoE damage. And of course, if you want to get much more benefits from Rain of Arrows, you need to root your enemies. Or let tank to group up them. So you have your enemies, of course, let's get some combat advantage, like not for all of them. So basically you want to pop first your cordon of arrow and just to root them and why not constricting arrow? Well you see cordon of arrow have bigger root radius. Basically if I will pop my 
rain of arrows here i still will root with two mobs which is very nice and very beneficial so basically you're putting into clamp instantly rain of arrows going inside rain of swords plant grow steel breeze and whatever left foot of course if enemy is like way too much strong you can do like double rain of arrows and double rain of swords with disruptive shot which is kind of very nice so let's say that's big pack of enemies and they are like very strong or you may be soloing so you're rooting applying going close again rooting applying two times again rain of swords and steel breeze and you kind of get the point Especially as a hunter, we can root a lot of enemies. So now let's showcase how it looks like in normal combat versus mobs. Of course, mobs strong only in dungeons, and this one probably we will wipe them more. So that's why I'm going like more to the power. So, like I say, we have now pack of the mobs. We just need to hit like root the all of them, so we can shot in middle. Instantly in same space, Rain of Arrows, you just dodge inside. Rain of Swords, Plant Grow, Steel Breeze. They can't move, and they're taking a lot of, a lot of damage. Now, of course, we can pop to some spell plug to check how it will work in AoE conditions, in normal, da no normal enemy health, because our enemies in this game like outside of dungeons we kind of pretty much squishy but i can show of course here one more time so we rooting them instantly casting rain of arrows even we can this one before we come back and just boom boom finale which is very nice because now we have like much more range or like our melee aoi powers okay so here we go in spell plug so let's see how much we can do in AoE and how good or how bad it is. Of course, I'm solo. So I will root them now. Rain of Arrows. Rain of Swords. And of course, just remember to dodge. Again, I'm rooting them. And again, I don't want to use like too many now. Which is not bad. I mean, I don't have tank. I don't have like full combat advantage and whatnot. And of course, keep in mind with disruptive shot, you just can put all your encounters, use disruptive shot, and you're instantly gaining rain of arrows and rain of swords, everything back. So technically, let's root them. Pretend we are far away. And of course, enemies can push you around, which is kind of annoying. But well, we have what we have, right? And I will die, like, because it's just way too much fire. Come on, can you just die? Thank you. I died. Well, that's fine. That's, like, totally fine. Let's see how we can pull up this one. Let's get them together. Of course, you need to be careful. As I say, Reign of Swords, you will take damage if you in air. Which is a little bit annoying. Maybe they will change it somehow. But overall, it's it's not that easy, like, test. Like, when you're alone. And you want to strong enemies. But it will look promising. And anyway, we don't have nothing, like, much better to use. I mean, of course, we can choose, like, maybe Hydering Strike. Instead of Long Strider. Because this melee is just doing much more damage and just applying roots, whatnot. So that can be one of another combos. And on AoE, well, it's not much at to use in AoEs anyway. So yeah, boys and girls, thank you for watching. Drop that like and see ya next time. Baby is out. Bye bye.